Today I'm going to be making your steamed rice hacks. All of these were submitted into our community's Discord over at the Food Fight Academy, so if you want to partake in these really cool food conversations, check out the links below. It really does help out the channel directly. Now the first steamed rice hack is actually coming from Damori Lover. This one is sausage and mayo. Okay. Now they didn't talk about which sausage they're using, so I'm going to use the best sausage, chorizo. I'm partial to chorizo, I think it's amazing, but feel free to use whatever sausage you want here. Damori didn't mention which sausage they use, so I get to use whatever I want, just like you will. Now make sure you do break that sausage down to unleash all of those flavors or all of those oils directly into the pan and well for other circumstances. I had to just break up the sausage a little bit because uh, it, it, it was previously frozen. Like I said, it was in my freezer. Like you don't freeze your sausage or your meats. Come on. Everyone has frozen sausage in their freezer, right? Or is it just me? Everyone has this. You're going to cook this sausage for just about three to five minutes depending on the size of it. And once you have this nice and cooked and rendered down, this is when we add our mayo. Again, I'm using QP mayo, but use whatever mayo you want or make your own mayo. But I'm lazy today. I mean, he's not wrong. We're trying to make this as easy as possible for you guys. It smells like super tangy from that mayo now. I, it kind of made my mouth like salivate water a bit. Let's get some rice. Now I'm just using a smaller portion of rice here because I'm going to be going through so many bowls, but feel free to use as much rice as you want. Top it with all that beautiful sausage and mayo concoction, and there is our first rice hack. Sausage and mayo over rice from Demori Lover. Cheers. Oh my god, that's so good. It's creamy and spicy. The chorizo is amazing. And then the rice gets flavored with all of that. That's fantastic. Now the next hack is gonna be from Arisa. I, I hope I pronounced that properly, but this hack is actually a ramen broth risotto. Now, since we are using pre-cooked rice, we're going to try to make the risotto with the pre-cooked stuff because I want you guys to be able to do this on the fly, like if you have leftover rice, that's the whole point of these hacks. Now I'm taking another portion of my rice and placing it into the world's cutest saucepan. That was, that's a lot of rice. You probably should have measured this out ahead of time, but we're just gonna wing it because you know, we're just trying new hacks. Now, since this is a ramen broth risotto, what I'm using is this suyu. Now this isn't really used for I guess you can kind of maybe use it for ramens, but it's usually used for soba, but it's a nice little cheap easy hack that you can use to use for broths or soups or sauces. Just about a, a half a cup into here. We don't want to put too much because it's really strong and then we're going to add another part of water to that too. Remember guys, suyu is very salty so you do have to dilute it, especially when you're going to be putting it into rice because the rice is going to absorb all that salt. And yes, I did add more rice to this. Pretty sure I put way too much liquid in here, so. Just how much liquid did you put in this? Seriously, you're still pulling liquid out? Come on. Remember, with risotto, you're usually using raw rice with your hot liquid and you're constantly stirring it. And what that does is it releases starch directly into your risotto. That's how it gets nice and creamy and thick. But since this is pre-cooked rice, we're just gonna try our best. That's all you gotta do. All you ever have to do is try your best. Keep stirring this until all that liquid has fully dissolved into that rice. And when it is nice and soaked up, it is going to be rich, thick, and delicious. Not risotto without the butter. I guess this is not really risotto anyway, so you could leave the butter out if you don't want it. Now I will admit the butter does add a lot of flavor here, but if you don't have butter or you don't want to have butter, feel free to completely leave it out. Just don't be like this guy. I'm a disaster. After you've fixed your disasters, grab all of that beautiful ramen risotto stuff, place it into a bowl, and this is ready to eat. Just look at that shine and that gloss. Hack number two is the ramen broth risotto, and it is so rich looking and so creamy, just from that little bit of butter, but also from that suyu that we had used. Cheers. That's fantastic. I know I said that with the other one, but it's fantastic in its own way. It's creamy like a risotto, which is very fascinating to me because it's not made like a risotto at all. It's slightly sweet and salty from that suyu that we used. A little bit of that buttery richness comes through. I have so many ideas of what I want to do now with this. This is hot. Now the next rice hack comes from Mr. AJL, and this is a cream mustard bacon rice hack on garlic bread. I don't have bacon or bread for garlic. Let's go. You know, you figured you'd be prepared for some of this. So I went to the store, I grabbed some bacon and I grabbed some killer bread because I really enjoy it. Came back with coffee in hand and my loot ready to go. Feel free to probably use whatever toast you want. We're using this to make our garlic bread. Now the garlic bread is fairly simple. You're gonna need one slice of your toast, one whole garlic clove that you're going to mush on the cutting board. Once it's nicely mushed on the cutting board, this is when we are going to chop it up as much as possible. You could also potentially use garlic puree if you have it laying around, but I'm just gonna use my knife to mush it onto my cutting board and kind of make 
make it into a garlic paste this way. Once you have that garlic nicely mushed up, collect as much as you can off the cutting board and combine this with a small dab of whole butter. Make sure that butter is at room temperature and then season the entire thing with a pinch of salt and try to use some kind of a butter knife or a spoon or whatever you got to really start combining this together. This is going to be your garlic butter we're going to use for the toast. Alternatively, you can make a compound butter and have that laying around, but I just did it this way because I'm lazy. Now for the bacon, this is very simple. You're just gonna need one slice of this thick boy bacon. Chop this up into small bite-sized pieces and that's all you need to do for the bacon segment. We're gonna start off by cooking this bacon. You just drop the piece, whatever. Just yeet your bacon into the pan. I honestly feel like this recipe is just using the rice as a vessel for the bacon, the bacon fat, the mustard, and the cream. Just throwing it out there, buddy. Is it really so wrong to use the rice to hold all of these delicious flavors? I don't think so. Now I'm just gonna, I'm gonna throw this in the toaster while this is going. That's called multitasking. Go ahead and place that bread in the toaster to become toast and continue cooking this bacon until it's nice and rendered. I've never had this bacon before, but it smells incredible. Hempler's. Oh, Washington, kind of local. After a few minutes, this bacon should be nicely rendered and slightly crispy, or just cook it however you want. I like mine slightly crispy as well. Then you're gonna yeet in just about 100 grams worth of rice, combine that with that bacon. I noticed that this started to stick to my pan really hard, so I threw in just a touch of water to help deglaze the bottom of the pan and get all that rice unstuck. Now we're going to add in just a touch of heavy cream followed by an equal amount worth of Dijon mustard. Give this a good stir, making sure all of that stuff is combined and look at this rice. I forgot to mention that uh, no one gave me instructions on how to make any of this. So I'm, I'm kind of just, just going, you know, just going by feel, trying my best. Make sure you spread that garlic butter as evenly as possible. And all we have to do is toast it. I don't know why he thought it'd be a good idea to actually hold the toast with one hand and use a blowtorch with the other, but I did end up toasting this very nicely after burning a part of that bread, and we made ourselves some garlic toast. That's good. Then we take our carbs, place it on top of our carbs. Oh my good lord, get it nice and even. All of that toast gets covered. No toast left behind. Mr. AJL, this one's for you. There it is, rice hack number three. Bacon, cream, mustard, steamed rice on garlic bread. Cheers. It shouldn't be as good as it is. Tangy from the mustard, creamy from the heavy cream, the richness and the fattiness and the saltiness of the bacon, and then you get that fresh garlic on the bread. It tastes like exactly what it sounds like. This is the most straightforward dish I think I've had in a long time. Now, before we get into the weeds with this other rice hack, I want to give the chef's kiss out to Sir John 88 Thank you for being a premium member over on Discord. Hack number four was actually a group effort that we discussed in office hours. As we were talking about some of our favorite rice hacks, we hashed out a very cool way of using rice as a dessert, which isn't uncommon in a lot of parts of the world, but we're gonna try to do our own take on it. So this one is the blueberry pie rice hack. Yes, I did say blueberry pie rice hack, so we're gonna don't eat the blueberries, dude, we need them. You're gonna take around 60 to 80 grams worth of blueberries with a touch of water into that world's cutest saucepan. Cook these down just until those blueberries soften. I used frozen blueberries, so this took a little bit longer, but if you have fresh, it might not take as long. To this, we're going to add around 200 milliliters worth of milk. Drink the other 200 milliliters because it's way too much. Give this a quick stir and let this start cooking in that milk. Now we're going to add in 150 grams worth of steamed rice. You want just about double the amount of rice as you do blueberries. Start cooking this over a medium heat just until it starts coming up to a simmer. This is when we're going to season it with a pinch of salt, which is absolutely necessary. Watch as the pan becomes possessed by some demon that is living in my house, probably a cat of some kind. Add your obligatory splash of vanilla, which is actually very necessary in this case, and continue to cook this over that medium heat. Just adding that hint of vanilla instantly made it smell like a blueberry pie. This is gonna be so good. It is gonna be so good. Continue cooking this for about three to four minutes just until it starts to thicken up really nicely. That's all you're trying to do here. Look at this rice. What is this? This looks so good. I can I can already tell this is gonna be one of my new go-to like end of the night dessert, but we're gonna finish it with something a little extra. Remember, it's not blueberry pie or crumble without the topping. Take a little bit of granola. This is just stuff I got from Costco. Now you can make your own granola, but this granola from Costco slaps. Look at this blueberry pie rice dish right now. Have you ever seen something that purple? Like that looks gorgeous. That's so pretty. I'm ready to dig into this. This is gonna be a treat. And I just worked out, so cheers. It's not overly sweet. It's only sweetened from the blueberries, which I really like. Then you get that bit of crunch from the granola. Really, really nice. I actually think it could use more salt. Oh, it's so decadent. And the vanilla comes through too. Oh. 
Hack number five actually comes from Demori Lover again, and they say to buy a rice cooker, which I'm not gonna make you guys do, but I am gonna give one away to one of our premium Discord members if you join the Food Fight Academy down below. If you guys want a bonus video, check out Ethan Chablowski right over here. He made an amazing rice congee dish that you can use with leftover rice. If you want a ramen hack video, click or tap right over here. My name is Chef BK, and remember, keep playing with your food.